it's a cold, cold day today. I say cold, I mean, for March it's cold. It's uh, one degree. And we are going to be moving the 500 now um, away from mine so I can start work on it. It's had its new windscreen put in, as you can see. Well, I say see. It's under there somewhere, but that was put in yesterday. Uh, 145 pounds and so yeah we're I'm not going to be doing any work on it today because it's just not the right weather but I just need to move it so it's taxed it's insured so it's all good to go um, move it in the day because obviously that headlight's not working and uh, we'll get it get it moved um, so I'm going to scrape the windscreen off get it started we're going to need to jump start it because uh, it's flat again so uh, yeah let's um, let's get this ready for moving right so we have made it no problems at all car drives absolutely fine no issues at all with the gearbox with the clutch no rattling nothing like that but then um, the MOT which was done uh, late September last year said it had two new um, arms put on so that's the main thing I think when it comes to knocking and rattling so that's good however um, the mileage is flashing but that could simply be because this has so, been so dead and I've had to jump start it that we need to reset everything and pull the negative off and just wait 10 minutes and maybe it might connect back up to the bluetooth module again so I'm not overly worried about that at the moment. Um, just going to leave this here until the weather improves because uh, it's just not the day to be doing anything. So I'm going to leave this here and start working on it. I think when, well, the, the temperature as of tomorrow just like literally shoots up by about 10 degrees. So we're going to do that. But uh, the windscreen is also good as well there's no issues there so i'm happy with that um so yeah we uh we will um hopefully get this done and dusted quite quickly really cool. we've got the bumper off so we can have a look at the damage now just to let you know that uh this was damaged i've already replaced this already um it was a slightly dink in here so you can see where it's slightly gone into here but we shouldn't need a replacement on that and that appears to be all good so uh, I'm not too worried about that um, the inner liners have completely and utterly been shredded um, and completely gone so I need to get one of them uh, this one on the other hand might be able to just fix that up uh, but I'm not 100% sure yet on what I'm going to do about that. Um, it's only literally just here, which is snapped off. Um, so, yeah, but otherwise, uh, yeah, we're all good. Uh, slam panel is all good as well. That probably just needs to be slightly bent up in here. Um, but, yeah, cat in. And it is, luckily, there's no damage to the legs whatsoever. So... Yeah, um, swap out the bonnet, um, replace or repair the mark there. And yeah, hopefully this will be a relatively quick turnaround to be fair. Just getting the parts off the bumper and putting it onto the new bumper. And yeah, I don't know if, what, if there's anything else um, on in there that was a problem. Um, it's, for 2013, it's it has got a bit rusty. I'm not going to lie, the battery strap is slightly rusty. Um, but other than that, uh, we're all good. So yeah, we're going to get started, and hopefully we can turn this around within a few days 
So one thing I've noticed with, or we've noticed is that the insurance company have butchered this inner liner for no reason at all. Um, they've done a complete cut on it. Now bear in mind, as I say, it was a really minor damage and they was all on. God knows why they've cut it, I really don't. They've obviously cut it to get it off, but they could have just unscrewed it. Um, and instead, um, they decided that they wanted to cut through it. God, when you go onto this side, which is totally fine, again, it's completely cut away at another inner liner. They need, there's not even any bolts or anything there, so I don't have no idea why they've done it. But, um, yeah, it's not... I thought initially it was cracked, but there's a nice, neat cut that runs all the way through there. So, don't know why they've done that. And then, of course, that's meant I've had to get another wheel liner. In the meantime, this has all gone down to the metal. So, um, just primed that and I'll give that a spray paint in a minute. And then we can get the uh, liner in here. And then this side of the car, well, we'll just give these all a rub down. And then that side of the car is going to be pretty much done as well. And then I think we'll do the same on the outside, uh, the other side as well. So one thing I've noticed with, or we've noticed, is that the insurance company have butchered this inner liner for no reason at all. Um, they've done a complete cut on it. Now, bear in mind, as I say, it was a really minor damage and they were all on. God knows why they've cut it, I really don't. They've obviously cut it to get it off, but they could have just unscrewed it. Um, and instead, um, they decided that they wanted to cut through it. God, when you go onto this side, which is totally fine, again, it's completely cut away at another inner liner. And they, there's not even any bolts or anything there, so I don't have no idea why they've done it. But, um, yeah, it's not... I thought initially it was cracked, but there's a nice, neat cut that runs all the way through there. So, don't know why they've done that. And then, of course, that's meant I've had to get another wheel liner. In the meantime, this has all gone down to the metal. So, um, just primed that, and I'll give that a spray paint in a minute. And then we can get the uh, liner in here. And then this side of the car, well, we'll just give these all a rub down. And then we, that side of the car is going to be pretty much done as well. And then I think we'll do the same on the outside, uh, the other side as well. Right, it's interior day today. So we are going to get this all sorted. I've removed one seat already. Someone's missing a fingernail here. So, um, that's a shame. Um, and then we need to remove the driver's seat. I've already washed the first one. It's about 13, 14 degrees today with a bit of wind. So I'm hoping the seats are going to dry uh, quicker today. So I've put them, or I've put one directly in the sun. So I'll get this one removed. And then I um, don't think we need to remove that one, the back, but we'll um, remove this one here, which is these two bolts down here. So let's get this one out and then we can proper have a go at this. Um, for some reason you just do seem to always get some form of mould on this carpet for some reason. I mean I don't even know what that is. Right, let's get this done before the sun goes in. Okay, so while I'm cleaning this stuff out, um, the owner is one of two types of people. And I know some people will say, oh, why do you care? But it could be the reason why this car's a write-off. So there's two little clues I found. Right, first off was these bags. I found a number of them. Do you hear it? No, it's silent. Fastgas.com. Now, when you Google what fast gas is, it's... Um, it's uh, the NOS canisters um, that you can buy. So, um, now let's be honest, those don't have a massive, great reputation here in the UK. In fact, you, you only 
really got two reasons to have these. You're either uh, in the cooking industry or the baking industry and you're making cakes with them or you are uh, inhaling this stuff. Um, most likely parked up or whilst driving because uh, let's be honest um, it seems to be quite a common sight to see uh, people uh, with balloons uh, whilst driving. Um, and then I think this stuff has been found I'm not sure I wonder if this is like the top of the some of these bigger uh, NOS canisters uh, and then you just put the balloon over it so um, so that sort of makes me think I wonder if you were high as a kite when you decided to smash into something and potentially potentially hit someone causing that glass to look like someone's bounced off it um, obviously it's an assumption and you know I've got no proof I just wonder um, whilst we're sort of slightly going off off uh, off piece so to speak that that might be the reason um, so yeah, I just thought I'd mention that whilst I've got all the seats out. Give this all a good clean now inside and hoover it up and then probably get the wet vac on it again to like get rid of stuff like this and that, whatever the hell that is. Oh, God, what is that? Yeah, great. Um, yeah, and hopefully this will be all looking pretty new when it all goes back in uh, shortly pattern part pattern bumper we're going to just prime that and get that coloured so this is going to be like my third bumper if you follow the channel you know that I've done two of these already but um, this is going to be completely from scratch and also it's a lot easier because there's no trim on it I saw that motor. right so we have applied the first layer of primer I don't really want to go too much into detail about it because, uh, as I say, I've done it many times before and I'm sure everyone 
this boy watching this knows how to apply primer so yeah just going to apply the first light coat then we'll uh, give it another once over and then I think I'm just going to have to leave that to dry for 24 hours because if as soon as you start sanding it after about an hour it slowly starts to come off so um, so yeah there's no rush there's no rush um, so yeah but these prices of these I picked this up for about 90 prior, um, patented but they are starting to creep up now um, and on eBay there are ones that have done the whole job delivered for about 250 odd pounds so I think this in total is going to set me back about what 90 primer is about half a can and then the cost of the paint which is normally a whole can so we're talking uh, it's about 17 pounds so 17 20 it may be let's let's round it up 115 pound in total for everything to get a rattle can finish oh yeah and then you got you got lacquer sorry so lacquer as well um depending on the type of lacquer you want i'm going to try something different and i'm going to go with a 2k which has got a hardener that you have to activate which i've never done before normally i've got one where it seems to be all in a can but i want to try this hardener activation one to see if it's any better but we'll go through that one at the end we'll just get this painted so yeah so you're looking at about 130 135 all in to hopefully have something pretty good so primer's on sanded it back so it's uh, nice and smooth panel wiped it as well so we can now get on with painting and we are going with paints for you 268a white which will need lacquer in so uh, I'm just going to use pretty much this whole can I think which I reckon three four coats maybe something like that so uh, yeah let's see how we get on right we are two coats down now slowly building it up Not very exciting, I'll be honest with you. I think we're just under halfway through the can. Right. So that's in one entire can of 26A. All done. And now we need to lacquer this up. I'm going something a bit different on the lacquer front, trying something a bit different this time. Where well, I've used lacquer before, which is a 2K, which is all in the can, just spray, just literally pay as you go kind of thing, you just spray it on, which to be fair has come out pretty well. I'm now going to try one with the hardener in and pulling the pin from the bottom releasing the hardener into it and then we're just going to try it uh, that way so yeah hopefully it's going to come out well so uh, I'll show you it and then we can uh, apply the first layer right this is the stuff that I'm trying out first for the first time quite expensive I think it's about it's about 20 pounds I think um, so yeah it's to the old twist and pull releases the hardener and this is the first coat that's gone on for the minute again because it's not sunny 
can't quite tell at the moment how it's doing, but we've just got to build up, build up the layers. So uh, yeah, 10, 15 minutes, I'll uh, apply some more. All right, layer number two is on. Again, a relatively light dusting. I think the third one's probably gonna be uh, the slightly thicker version of the lacquer. Okay, I think this has had, well I don't think, I know, it's had four coats and actually it's come out pretty well actually, I think. I'm quite happy with this product. Um, probably just maybe gonna slight bit of orange peel in parts. So I'm gonna leave this 24 hours and then I'll uh, use some fine sandpaper to uh, to get rid of that but actually hopefully it's all good and uh, can start putting the, uh, the pieces on <laughs> 